Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Laser Everything, and today I am bringing you the ultimate gold fiber laser engraving guide. We're gonna be covering 10 and 14 karat yellow gold, as well as 14 karat rose gold, and 14 karat white gold. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about marking and photo engraving on these various materials, but we're not gonna be covering cutting. We're gonna cover that in a future episode in a week or two, because it's a whole nother ball game. Uh, when that is ready, I'm gonna throw a link right up here uh, so that you can go ahead and click that card and get to it easily. But for right now, we're focused on marking and photo engraving. So if you're interested in doing these things on gold, any kind of gold, Stay tuned, because we're getting into it right now. I do just want to preface this episode by saying we are going to get better results all around on the white gold today because it's less pure gold. So uh, white gold was initially developed to imitate platinum and uh, it's 25% zinc and nickel. Uh, it's 75% it's gold. That's what gives it its white color. And having those extra alloys in there is going to go a long way for helping us to get some nice and interesting marks on the white gold. So white gold is kind of in its own little camp. Uh, rose gold, which is still a mixed metal uh, and the yellow golds are going to be a little more difficult to work with we're gonna have a little less range with them especially when working on photos so I just want to warn you about that uh, this has been my experience so far there may be better settings out there but these were the best ones I was able to get in my tests so here we are on the desktop and I'm gonna be using my 110 millimeter lens for these tests your lens may be different uh, and your wattage laser may be different I'm on a 30 watt laser so if yours are different you may have to change your settings a little bit to get them to match if you want to use our automatic converter, feel free to sign up for the Patreon. It's patreon.com slash laser everything. We have an Excel file that will auto convert these settings for you. But we've got EasyCAD open and it's time to open our first test file. I've been building this test file for a couple weeks and fine tuning things. And I'm going to be uploading this to the Patreon as well. Uh, so we've got our gold test right here. We're going to go ahead and open that. And we've got five different settings that we're gonna use on our different golds. So if we zoom in and take a look, we're starting with the white gold today. Remember again, it's kind of in its own camp. Uh, we have a gold base pass, which is going to uh, kind of finish the surface for us so that we can do our other marks on. We've got our white gold cleanup. So if we don't wanna do anything extra with this, we can just run the white gold cleanup and call it a day. Uh, next, we have our white gold anneal. This gives us a really, really white white finish on white gold uh, it's very very nice it's got a little bit of a sparkle to it we're going to check that out in a second we've also got our white gold gold sparkle setting which actually will turn the white gold gold in color uh, which is very very cool that we can do that at all and last but not least we have our white gold black which will give us an actual black on white gold we're not able to get actual black on the other golds as you will see but with white gold we can get a black and it looks really really good so uh, all we're going to do is take our test file here we can run through the settings really quick so uh, let's take a look at our white gold base we've got a speed of 500 a power of 40 a frequency of 25 all right uh, we've got our white gold cleanup, uh, and that's going to be 750 speed, 25 power, 45 frequency. And we've got our white gold uh, anneal white, so it's that white one. This is a high frequency setting. We're at 2500 speed, boosting the speed way up. 50% power, 190 frequency, okay? Now we've got these next two for our gold sparkle setting. Uh, we're actually going to be doing 750, 25, 200, another high frequency setting, and we're changing our line distance. So instead of the standard 0 0.025, which we're using for all the other settings, we're coming all the way down to 0 0.001 millimeters, a really, really tight hatch uh, in order to get this setting. So that's an important note. Uh, we're also going to be doing the same thing for our white gold black setting. It's very, very tight hatch. We can come over here and take a look at that as well. It's going to be 0 0.001 millimeters. So for those last two, really, really tight hatch. And if you don't use them, they won't work. So just something to keep in mind. And uh, we've got those settings all lined up and ready to go. Now, there's something really important. I touched on this a minute ago. I'm just going to mention it again. And this goes for all golds. Underneath our custom settings, we have the base pass, okay? And we need to run the base pass first before we run any of these settings. And the reason is gold as a material in the laser world 
is extremely reflective. A lot of the light that we're throwing down at the gold is actually just bouncing away. So in order for us to do some of these cooler, more low power or high frequency passes, we actually have to put a base down first to mar the surface. Uh, and then we can do some cool stuff on top of that. So uh, don't forget for anything outside of the gold base, and this goes for all of our gold settings we're gonna try today, you have to put the base down first, all right? So there it is, uh, that is the test file. It's set up and ready to go. So we can go ahead and run this now on our white gold, and we can take a look at some of the results. All right, so we've got our white gold here, and this actually already has some marks on it. If we flip it around and take a look at the other side, I did more testing on the white gold than any of the other metals, and it's not because it was the most difficult to work with. It was just because we were getting so many different good results, and I wanted to make sure we tested all of them. So uh, we've got this down on the bed, and I'm just going to light our test file up, and then we'll go ahead and give it a quick run. So the red laser is lighting now, and we'll just go ahead and scooch this into position underneath some of the old tests. And uh, there we go. And uh, with that done, and we are focused, okay, all of these marks are perfectly in focus, we're going to go ahead and run our test file. So there we go guys, the test file is done and we can actually pull the camera here and we'll take a nice close look at these to see the kind of results that we're getting. So here we are under the macro guys and there is our base pass. Uh, no cleaning, no nothing. You can go ahead and polish these up or clean them as you want. Uh, so there's the base pass. Then next we've got the cleanup pass. So that's what the cleanup looks like after we get the cleanup done. Here is our anneal white, uh, very, very shiny, almost a silver look on that one, which is really, really good. Uh, here is the gold color. If I just tilt the camera just a little bit, uh, you can actually start to see that gold shine. It looks much better when uh, when you're right in person. We'll come back to that one. And there is our white gold black, okay? And these don't rub off, they don't go away. There are uh, awesome permanent settings and this could probably use a little cleaning, but it definitely sells the point. Uh, so let's go ahead and pause for one second. There we go. And I can actually get a little closer now to show you that gold sparkle setting uh, at a little bit more of an angle and uh, that, that's looking really, really nice. So uh, those are your basic settings for white gold. Now, I'm sure you guys remember me just telling you that the uh, yellow gold and the rose gold don't have as much range as the white gold, and that's true. And uh, one of the things that I found in my testing is no matter what I did, I still got the standard range of colors based on the original white gold settings. So what we're gonna do now is I'm actually gonna run all three of these different kinds of gold with these same settings. So we're not changing the settings at all, though I do have them in the parameter library under their respective names, just so that people don't get confused. And so that you can remember, yes, indeed, these gold settings work. But with that said, we're not changing the settings. though they do have slightly different names and we'll go ahead and take a look at those right now. So if we come into our parameter library here, and uh, open that up and we scroll down, we can see all of our gold settings right here. Now we have very descriptive names for the white gold. We've got base, cleanup, anneal white, gold sparkle, and black. And while these settings don't change for the other metals, the names do just a little bit so that they're a little more descriptive of what you're gonna get. So if we look at the rose gold, we again have base and cleanup, but we don't get the anneal white, we don't get the gold sparkle, and we don't really get a black, we get a very deep brown. So I've gone ahead and renamed those settings bright, medium and dark uh same exact settings again in the same order same exact settings just a slightly different outcome on the uh warmer golds so same thing down here for the yellow gold we've got base cleanup bright medium and dark okay we also have two sets of photo settings we've got a set of photo settings for white gold and we have a set of photo settings for our yellow and rose golds okay and we'll take a closer look at that after we're done running our settings. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and run our test pattern on the different warmer golds. Okay, so we're gonna do yellow gold at 10 carats and 14 carats, and we're gonna do a 14 carat rose gold as well. Just to be really, really clear, one last time, the settings themselves aren't changing. They're in the same order, just the names are a little different. So if you look up here in this top right corner, I'm not changing the names up here, but, but, the names would change in the settings if you selected that the different set of parameters. So we could go ahead and replace all of these in order 
right here with our rose gold base cleanup bright medium and dark if we went in order and changed all of those settings they'd be exactly the same they just have different names so again it's more to just reduce confusion when you're trying to use these settings so that you know what you're going to get when you're selecting the setting we're not going to do all of that right now on camera because it's kind of a waste of time we're just going to leave everything the way we have it set up and we'll run these on the different metals so here we are, we're ready to run things. And like I said before, the uh, white gold already had some previous tests spilling over, but we're here with the rose gold now, and we've got that right on the bed. So we're just gonna go ahead and get this lit up and then we'll run our test spread on the rose gold. So we're all lit up and let's go ahead and take a look at rose gold, 14 carats. All right, let's take a look at these with the macro and see what we think. So here we are under the macro guys and we've got our base pass, our cleaning pass, our bright, our medium, and our dark. And uh, I think those are looking really, really good. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm really, really happy with that. That's a nice spread. I'd also like to point out that our dark marks are looking much darker when we're not zoomed in like a microscope. Uh, we can actually see them much more clearly. They are pretty dark. Uh, so don't be confused by the macro view there. Uh, these are dark marks and they do look very, very good on the gold. All right, two down, two to go guys. We're all set up with the 10 karat yellow gold now. So let's run the same spread on the 10 karat yellow. And there we are on the 10 karat yellow guys. So let's go ahead and take a look with the macro. So here we are on the 10 karat yellow guys. We've got our base, our cleanup, our bright, our medium, and our dark. Our dark's much more clear here on the yellow gold. Rose gold definitely puts up a little bit of a fuss, uh, but these settings are looking great. You're free to use these however you'd like. Uh, you can use some of them or none of them or all of them. Uh, I'm just showing you the spread that we're getting here today. So these are all looking really, really good. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, bigger shot, the bigger picture here. And here we go, guys. There is our yellow gold spread. You can see, again, that dark mark really darkens up when we just back up from it a little bit. It's absorbing much more of that light, and uh, it looks really, really good. So there's 10 karat yellow for you. Let's move on to the last piece of gold we're working with today, and that's going to be the 14 karat yellow. Here we go, guys. Same test, 14 karat yellow gold. Let's go ahead and run it. And we are finished with the 14 karat yellow, so you can be assured that we are going to take a look at it under the macro. Let's take a look. All right, another look here. We've got our base, our cleanup, our bright, our medium, and our dark. Uh, and again, guys, these are all the same settings across all of these different golds, okay? And we really do get a nice spread. Uh, that's looking very nice. Let's zoom out and take a look at it from a normal view. Here we are from a normal distance, guys, and you can see we are still getting that beautiful spread right across the uh, the palette there. And I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. So uh, there you go. That's the, uh, the gold settings for you. If you're interested, don't go anywhere because we're gonna be starting gold photos right now. Okay, so we're back over at the desk and we're gonna start photos. Now, I have said this a million times and I can't say it enough, uh, but I'm gonna say it one more time. We are using the same settings for every kind of gold, the white gold, the rose, and both carrots of yellow are all getting the same exact settings. They are just named a little bit differently inside the parameter library so that you know what you're getting, okay? So it's just for convenience, but the settings aren't changing. It's the same five settings in the same order. Uh, with the base is the, uh, the same as the base for all the others. 
the cleanup is the same as the cleanup for all the others. The anneal white is the bright setting, the gold sparkle is the medium setting, and the black mark is the dark setting. So they're all the same all across the board. Now, uh, you're gonna wanna pay attention here for this next part. We're gonna open up an image file and we're going to do a little bit of photo engraving on these golds. And there are different settings between the white gold and the warm gold. So those settings do change across golds. They're not the same. So uh, you just wanna pay particular attention and we're gonna talk about those settings in a minute. Uh, I just wanted to warn you that it is not the same case for photos. Photos do engrave a little bit differently between the white and then the rose and yellow, okay? So they're, they're separate settings and we're gonna talk about that right now. So we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna hit open and we're gonna open up our photo test file. Uh, if you've watched the engraving photos on silver episode, this will look familiar to you. It's the same exact photo. In fact, if you haven't already watched the engraving photos on silver episode, I would stop here and I would go watch that and then come back. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a card up right over here for you guys so that you can take a look at that because we are skipping over some prep things that I'm definitely doing for this file and we go over them in detail in the Photos on Silver episode. So go ahead and watch that if you haven't already, then come back here and uh, we're gonna pick up where we left off. So basically, just to kind of recap what we talk about in that video, when you do photos on precious metals, we have a base pass so that we can lay out uh, like a nice base for our photo to go on so that we can actually see the details. And then we have a final detail pass where we're actually engraving the photo. And the same rules apply uh, on silver as they do on gold. So we're gonna start with our base pass today. I'm just gonna go ahead and center that up. And uh, this is just pure black and pure white and we're gonna come in here, we'll start with our white gold. So let's scroll down and we just wanna find white gold photo base. Uh, and this is the one we're gonna use first. So just like on the regular gold marks, we're using this just to de-mirrorize, right? The gold so that it's not reflecting away our details from our photos. So uh, let's go ahead and run this on the white gold first. Now that that's done, we're not gonna touch anything. We're just gonna come back into our parameter library and we're gonna find the uh, white, the, the white gold photo white. And this is just gonna whiten that up as much as we can so that we can layer details on top of it. So let's go ahead and select that and we're gonna mark this next. And then lastly, we need to bring our details in. So let's drop our detailed version of this in and we're gonna delete the base because we don't wanna run that again. And uh, let's just center up this detailed version of the photo. And we're gonna come into our parameter library and we're going to select white gold photo details, okay? Um, one thing I wanted to point out is that we're doing these really small because most of the time customers have small gold things that they want photos engraved on. Uh, gold is expensive and people aren't just walking around with big sheets of it asking for photos. So I tried to do these examples for you relatively small so that it gives a real world example of how those are going to look. We're also going to get far more detail out of the white gold than we're going to get out of the warmer golds, unfortunately, just because the white gold does have that nickel and zinc in it, and it's really going to allow us to extract a lot more detail from our file. So uh, just a couple notes that I wanted to make really quick. Um, with that, we can go ahead and run our detail pass uh, now. So I actually messed up when I was recording this the first time for the white gold video. Uh, I didn't realize I had fixed DPI checked. Now, uh, you don't want this checked. You want this unchecked. And the reason is when you're preparing your photo, you're preparing it at the size you want it to be in your final mark when you're in Photoshop dealing with the photo itself. Uh, and so I, when I made this photo, I took a measurement of the area that I wanted to engrave and I made sure that it was set to 300 DPI in Photoshop and then resized the photo to fit that area. So when it leaves Photoshop, it's already 300 DPI. We know it's the correct DPI and the correct size. So we don't need EasyCAD making decisions for us about the resolution, okay? So make sure this is unchecked and we're actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna re-record that section and show you what it's supposed to look like. Uh, that way there's no you know, confusion about which one is the right one. So here we are guys, you can see the fixed DPI there on the left and the not fixed DPI on the right. 
and uh, that is definitely the way we want to go. Uh, it's a it's a much clearer image. Again, these are only nine millimeters tall. Okay, so they're very very small. So there's only so much detail you can get at that size, but still. We don't want EasyCAD making decisions about our DPI, okay? We wanna make sure we have our photo the right size and the right resolution when it leaves Photoshop, and uh, this is why. So we're back in EasyCAD. Our rose gold photo ended up coming out great after a little bit of fixing there, so we know we need to pay attention to our fixed DPI, right? Make sure we turn that off every time we load a bitmap in. Uh, and from here, we can move on to the warmer gold. So if we scroll down in our parameter library here, you'll see that uh, we have 10 to 14 karat yellow and rose gold, and we have three settings. So if it's a warmer gold, yes, it's using the same settings, but they're different than the white gold settings for photos, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and load in our photo base. And what I'm going to do here is actually, I'm going to show you the recording of all three of these at all three stages at the same time, because they mostly come out the same. Uh, and then we can go ahead and examine them just to save on a little bit of time. I'm going to show you how they all come out. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and jump over to the laser and take a look at our warmer golds. And here we go, guys. We've got our rose gold. We've got our 10 karat gold right there. And we've got our 14 karat yellow gold here. And uh, they are looking really good, especially considering they're all only nine millimeters tall. Okay, you can get substantially more detail out of these if you go larger. I just wanted to show you how things would look at a size you'd do. If you were like doing a locket, right? Or like a small medallion, uh, these are the kind of photos you're going to be able to get on those. So uh, really, really happy with those. And there you go, guys. I really, really hope that you enjoyed this episode. Uh, it took a super long time to, to, to make. I've been spending weeks on this. Special shout out to Benchworks who sent us all of this gold so that we could test and make this video. I know they're going to get a lot of use out of it. I hope you get a lot of use out of it, too. Uh, you know, as I always say, I'm not perfect. You guys can probably really fine tune these settings, particularly the photo ones. Photo engraving on metal is a thing that takes forever to master. I'm certainly not a master, uh, but this should be enough to get you started, especially that little trick about laying down the base first and then engraving on top of that. Uh, that, that takes you from like really bad photos to like something that's actually decent. Uh, and then you can take it and refine it from there. If you loved this episode, uh, go ahead and smash the like button. It really boosts engagement. Leave me a comment too. Let me know how you do photos or if you do photos at all or if this episode helped you or just say hi. Uh, really anything, leave me a comment. Also, please, if you haven't already, sign up for the Patreon. It supports me. It supports the channel. It supports the podcast, Laser Source, that we do. It's available pretty much everywhere you listen to podcasts. And it supports our amazing Discord community. Uh, all of those things take an insane same amount of time and I want to spend more time working on them and every single patron that we get and we've been getting so many lately uh, is pushing me closer and closer to that goal of really doing this full time uh, that's that's what I want to do so if you haven't already please sign up for the patreon you get instant access to my entire fiber laser and co2 laser libraries that's going to include all of these settings as well so if you just don't feel like copying them out of the video uh, you can get instant access to them ready to go uh, in a really awesome Excel file, which will convert your power and uh, lens settings for you. So if you have like a 220 lens on a 50 watt machine, you can just go and look down the chart after plugging in your lens and wattage and all of the settings will be right there converted for you, ready to go. So that's really awesome as well, uh, as well as a ton of other stuff. Uh, we've got posts about running a laser business, uh, bonus episodes of the podcast, and so much more. Uh, so don't forget to check that out. If you want to join an awesome laser community filled with people that love laser,
lasers uh, and love talking about them. There are new photos every day. We help new people get started. I mean, we do a little bit of everything in there. Join the Discord. There's a link down in the description. It's free. It only takes a second to sign up and it's just the most amazing community filled with the best members. So definitely going to want to check that out as well. And with that, that's all I've got, guys. So thank you so much for watching this episode. I really, really hope you got value out of it. That's my number one priority. Just want to help you guys. And um, I'm really proud of this one. I think we got some really, really nice gold settings. So uh, thanks again. And we'll see you in the next one.